They don't taste too- It's cleaver time! Talked about Raji playing with three Filipinos. For so I don't know what's wrong with Norman. I don't know what goes on in his head. I don't know why he does this to himself. But he went from playing with four Indonesians to three Filipinos. From army That's geniuses right. into Gate Slave. I just think this man is either the the most zen person in the world, which to be fair, Norman kinda is. Although I remember stories on AG. Remember that time where they had to sub in because Norman like crashed in a bike or something. Like he's just this he's just this character, man. And now he f he willingly goes into a team of three Filipinos. I mean, he, God bless your soul, Norman. You are you are something else. I don't know why you would do this. Kata Umi, thank he you. Might be something else here too, John. No jump in. Whoa! Take it easy. And Norman, the only one showing himself in that mid lane. Cox there as well in the bat rider. Entity grouped up in the mid as well. So it could be a huge team fight to break out if they want it, but not before we have another pause. Sound issues here for Toby. XD from Roger, or rather Rodgy. I appreciate a good XD. Is it strange, John, that I'm team speak moment 2023? You, you know, we were complaining about this five years ago when we first started casting, right? Because I was this was about the NA teams. I always said, how are NA teams still using team speak? And this was five years ago. Guys, don't give up. And they're still, yeah. these teams are still using TeamSpeak. 30 seconds. I mean, to be fair, we use TeamSpeak as well for certain applications in Mike. We haven't had that many issues, thankfully. And it's just one of those things. You have a bad server host and oh, you just have a bad time. It is what it is, Mikey. There have been some internet fluctuations, at least what I've noticed. Like some servers have been going up and down. I couldn't play my Battlefield 5 for a couple of days. Very annoying, but. Oh no. You get by, Mikey. You get by. Entity. We're on into Cox, Narman, and Force. And Katomi feeling pretty confident that they can't actually lock him down. And it seems like Geek Slate, they won't even try. We'll focus more on just spamming voice lines for now, as they will get three bounties for the price of one. Watson able to pick up one for his team, but that's about all they're going to get. And we'll start off with the mid lane while we're here. Of course, Cox is going to be on that Batrider against Stormstormer on the mid Ember. Who do you think this matchup favors? Do you think Stormstormer can, can make this one work, or should Cox have his way with him? Well, we've seen Embers win this matchup. It's all just a matter of outplay. It's certainly a lot easier for the Batrider to just get an advantage here. Melee hero, you spam the Napalm up, you get some good right click, you melt through the early Flame Guard. I'm surprised Stormstormer even went for Flame Guard. I think the winning, the lane winners we see when they outplay here is like Sleight of Fist Chains. You just harass the Batrider, you can't really sustain. And you just get that opening before, like, level 4, level 5. You have Still, uh, Stormstormer should be able to find a CS, no problem. It does take some time for the Batrider to ramp up. And as long as you keep your spacing right, you're not under major threat. What you will watch out for is the support rotation. So, both are tiny for Katawomi and Narman's Earth Spirit. He can make a lot of action happen on mid. So, 4 minutes, if your sidelines can get out, they should. And look for that opportunity on the mid lane. Absolutely. Well, have a look at the side lanes as well. I mean, top lane, you've got Fishman there to support Watson on that Slark. Force going to be against them, along with Narman on the Earth Spirit. <laughs> so this top lane, like, Watson really could start to pop off on that Slark, considering the matchup he has. The two melee heroes against the Slark, generally, you know, every Slark stream, but against this Primal Beast, it gets a little bit scary. This guy just kind of onslaughts in, pops a trample, and then you've got the backup of Narman on this Earth Spirit, who can just kind of follow up stun with a roll. Speaking of the Devil, though, he does get pounced up, but we'll go for the kick away on the Slark as Fishman now. We'll get chased down by Force, but is going to be okay to just outrun the Primal Beast. This Fishman did actually go for Brown Boots at that level 1 mark, so pretty smart on his part. But my point being here, John, at this top lane, it can kind of go either way. It just seems to be one of those kind of outplay lanes. Outplay lanes are just really out position lanes, it does feel like. It's all a matter of if you can get in this angle to get this pounce and catch this certain hero, you can find that angle. Same thing for Geek Slave. If you can get the kickback, get the roll on top, line up your trample and non-slot, then you can certainly just melt these heroes. So it's gonna be a little bit more back for this bot lane though. Skem already in danger. Oh boy, Skem's already gone on that pause one laner. Toby and Kataomi able to set up on the tiny. We'll secure first blood, so happy days for Kataomi. First kill to go the way of Entity, and of all heroes you could pick off, the Lena probably your most favorite. I mean, you know, this pause one Lena, it does tend to take off pretty darn quick, but if you get killed a few more times, it can be a bit of a slower process. 
And that's the one thing when you are running the Enigma, because you're shoving in the lands, you can just control equilibrium so well. Raji's forced to like go for these pole swallows, not in the ideal position. Scam is just exposed. You've got the setup that can come out from Kataomi. You've got the value point, the Malefice. It doesn't take too much to melt Melina in lane. She just doesn't have that much armor, even with all the iron branches here. Mo is there, top lane, they'll make the jump in onto the Rubik, and Fishman is gonna drop. Easy pick up here for, for Geek Slate as Nam and had the vision to get connect the role and force obviously just able to follow up quite quite simply. Yeah, it's it's better to lose Fishman than it is to lose Watson, like because they're focusing so much on killing off that Rubik, your Slark is pretty much uncontested in farm. So you're trading these kills away for a huge laning advantage here. 19 to 7 in comparison there. Yeah, Cox though, mid lane, he finds Stormstormer. That's the thing against the Batrider, like, even if you're playing the Ember, if you mess up your spells just a little bit, the Batrider is just going to run you down, and Cox, he does exactly that. Dyer's middle tower is I am just so attack. curious about Storm Stormer's build-up, like, Flame Guard, Slide Fist, like, the standard build-up. Again, I, I'm trying to remember, and I do feel like the winning Embers we've seen is usually, like, a Slide Fist Chains, or at least a 1-3-1 one one build-up by 5, where you can dish out a lot of damage, you can punish Cox when he does try to jump in, Chain him under tower, chain him under creep wave, cut some of that time out from his firefly, get some distance out. Radiant We're not even, we didn't even see a rotation need to come in. Cox just has control and the matchup is just that much easier with him at the level advantage. And he was trying to go again. AP was, was coming in, but now cancels the Cox. He might just move back in. Doesn't have the napalm stacks to really threaten Radiant's the life of Stormstormer. Has been killed. Leave him be for now. Meanwhile, top lane, Fishman gonna get caught out again on the Rubik. So Force able to pick up his second kill. And I do love those Polaris voice lines, man. This is so damn good. So annoying if that's getting spammed at you when you when you're getting killed every two seconds. <laughs> yeah, that's from Chupluck, a uh, local Visayan caster from Cebu. Very, very good voice lines. Very funny guy too. He's the kind of dude that would literally freeze when there's a pause. Go silent when there's a global sound. He's that oh, dude on Reddit. So. Yeah, that's him. That's True Pluck. Yeah, that's him doing the voice lines, I believe. So, he, shout he's out to the him. guy that took his clothes off as well, right? Like every time something happened, he'd take another shirt <laughs> off. <or something. laughs> I think he did do that. Yeah, he, he's so entertaining. He's, just, yeah. he's, he's such a funny guy. Anyway, this is not funny up top here, Watson. Getting chased down again, but in the meantime, they've even got the Lena. So Watson may drop, but still trying to run. Mid lane, Stormstorm is going to go down. Watson still fighting, actually finds Narman. Meanwhile, bottom lane, the tiny, the Lena, everyone's dying. Everybody gets a kill. Force is still chasing down Watson. He plans. Oh, he's getting creep. blocked. He's no. getting blocked by his own creeps. No, oh, the creeps. Watson's okay. Oh. Watson's fine. Force has no mana to make the dive in. Just kills all across the map, Jonathan. I, I don't even know what to analyze there. I mean, you're finding some good wins on either lane here for both sides. The big difference maker is that mid for Cox. Like this bat rider on this overwhelming start into the blink, into the travels timing he's going to be seeing here. The activity you can expect from him is just on the next level. For Geek Slate though, their bot lane is just not in a good position. Like, there's only so much Raj you can do in this lane. Every time you step out of position, the tiny can just have a toss and it's easy setup for Toby to run you down. So, that is one hurting point for Geeks. Like, yes, Scam is still up there in CS, he's still up there in net worth, but you really don't want to be feeding this onto Toby. His timing, such a durability, is just going to be that much quicker. <laughs> that damn voice line, man. So good. If only we were talented, John. We, we might make a popular <laughs> voice line one day. Oh, no. Probably not. I, I had some pretty good ones. They just weren't chosen, man. I had some good ones. Oh. <laughs> It is what it is. It is. Probably the last chance we'll ever have anyway. <laughs> True enough. Six to five. Oh, Six to five Watson. gets late's way. Top lane, Watson in trouble again. Trampled up here by Force. Onslaught did connect, but the Shadow Dance was there just in the nick of time. Watson, able to get out of there. Fishman was just trying to make sure he gets out alive. and That's the second time where the Slark should have just been dead, but gets away with the Slither of HP and... It's going to be a little bit frustrating for Force getting so close yet so far. Still, he is having a great old time in the top lane, but Watson is still getting the levels and farm he needs. 
He's getting the levels and farms he needs, and Force isn't doing that hot in terms of net worth. He's behind Toby right now. He's the bottom net worth core. Not lagging behind too much, but certainly will stall out some of his timing. So, Storm Stormer. Storm Stormer gonna rush in, Cox. Gonna be alright. Narman can't set the same for him though. He will get blocked with his roll, but it doesn't seem like they're 100% confident continuing for this. Katomi will show up. Narman finally goes down. Roger, can he find a trade? Katomi, oh, it's a double light strike array. Storm Stormer forced to rim it out, but they're gonna lose Fishman. It'll be a two for one trade in the favor of Geek Slate as they do find the, the double kill on the supports. And with that entity, top tower yeah, you found the Earth Spirit, but it just cost you so much. Yeah, it's, it's a lot of sacrifices. Still only two supports to trade away, but the fact that Skems there to soak up some of that EXP, switching out from the jungle farm, giving a nice boost to the Lina, start to claw his way towards the top as he has started to drag behind in that word. And those kills have led to Cox having this travel soft. Sub 10 minutes. He's ready to run around. He still has the last one ready as well if they see the opportunity to play with it. Yeah. is around, just waiting very, very patiently. Katomi is there to help out if they do make the jump in on Toby, though. Narman might be the bait here. Toby going to move in along with Katomi, but Cox, he'll start moving in now as well as the Batrider. He'll go for the lasso, and they should have damage to get it done. The Silence will not it's allow the turnaround Black Hole play. That's a big one. Cox, great rotation. But can he get out without getting caught out? It seems like he can. Instead, they'll try to chase down Narman in the tree line, and it doesn't seem like they realize Narman is still in the tree line, just sitting there. He will successfully hide his way to survival, and they just won't realize he's fine. Yeah. Just hugs the tree line in the right spot, doesn't get hit by the slide of fist. They drag so much attention down bot. You're opening up more avenues for Skemp to just farm that triangle and have Force build into that BKB. And you're finding some good movement out from Geek Slate. Entity, again, they're not lagging too far behind in build up here. You are still getting good pacing out from Watson. His Echo Saber is almost done. This is to play into BKB or Ags. Can line up from there as well. But Narman's still hanging around this area. I mean, Toby shows back in. Fishman and Katarumi are there to back up. They don't have the lasso, so he does back off in the end. But they can line up for top now with all that commitment bot. Watson, still around. Cox wants to try and make a jump in, but he said, without the lasso, chances are you aren't going to get him. They'll just go after the top tier one instead, and there'll be no defense to come out. At the very least, though, Entity has found the bottom tier one tower, so they do trade evenly in terms of those objectives. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Geek Slate, they'll be okay with the trade. They just want to fight. Classic SEA Dota. They just want to try Radiant's and move in and get some fights going. Fox will TP out at maybe the wrong moment because mid lane they are going to see Storm Stormer. But without the Batrider, they won't have the damage output. Instead, Radiant's Fishman and Katomi may get spotted out in a moment attack. as well. They do have the Ember to back them up though, but they'll make the jump in. Katomi, he'll be targeted on that tiny. And he will just drop his Cox now. We'll go after Fishman on the Rubik perhaps. Lasso committed. And there should be no saving Fishman. They do just perma stun him up. Storm Stormer trying to help from a distance, but realizes he can't really do too much. We'll just let him go down. Yeah, okay, not the biggest kills for Geek Slate. They're only finding support pickups. But they are feeding a good amount of net worth onto Cox, allowing him to just get bigger and bigger and start to hit those timings you want to see on the Bathrider Blink. Only a thousand gold away. For Entity, this is just one of those things. You pick the Enigma, he's not going to be able to play around Black Hole for quite some time as long as that silencer is around with the threat of global silence. You just play that bot lane, you keep shoving out and keep farming up, playing this aura build up instead. But Toby's not ready to contribute with the Aura's yet. The output of Geek Slate is high enough that even if he was to show up, it would just lead to his downfall. So they have to play this more passive game on Entity, waiting for Watson to hit that moment where your Slark can come in, use these prolonged fights to his advantage. Uh, maybe a little bit more time, uh, like five more minutes on that. He is rushing the Blade of Alacrity, probably looking for the Ags buildup from that point. Once you do have the double pounce in, the game does simplify. And finding these big targets in Scam and Cox becomes a lot easier. And you can just go for that core versus core matchup that does feel like Watson can dance around. 
still a 1k advantage to wave entity. Uh, Watson being the saving grace right now. For the end of things. Not being able to kill this Lark. Well, again, they've been just so close. Rotation's down towards the bottom lane now. Narman and Roji just sticking as a team. Support duo. Making sure Skem does remain safe on that POS1 laner. Seems like both times they might just... Both teams, they may just take the time now to just... Just relax as... Well, I suppose, I say relax, but they've got plenty of time to just spam voice lines again. That's what it's all yeah, about. Yeah, you know, Force... He was just actually just pulverizing a creep in a camp right in front of Watson. Like, yeah. he's just trying to prove a point. It's such a low cooldown. He's not going to go for these kill plays anyway. He just wants his BKB. So you can't fault the guy. So, right in front of Watson. They've just fought over a camp. That's pretty funny to watch. What's not funny is the smoke out, though. Narman and Raji again moving as a unit. They've got Cox in that lane. Just one good roll in from Narman and set up here. It's really hard to get away from this support duo because you haven't got any kind of defensive items here. Like, Toby has a mech, but that's not going to remove all the silences that can come out. Oh, Cox counter smoke. Cox himself this bot lane. There is going to be a counter smoke trying to hunt down the bat rider, so Cox needs to be very, very careful. He does have his support duo nearby, and they do have the global silence, but they may need to pop it very, very soon. Roger so far is waiting. Silence is there by Narman. He'll try to tank the gank on the Earth Spirit, and by the time for Cox to TP out, and that he will. So you lose your Earth Spirit, but he does allow the Batrider to get out of there. And I'd call that probably a win for Geeks, like considering how many heroes had to rotate for that. Yeah, it, it was a lot of heroes coming out. You drag the attention of Stormstorm as well. And you are getting space out for Watson. I think the movement from Geeks Lake is just not quite in the right part of the map. The Stark is able to farm Stormstorm at all. Immediately just deleted here by Skem. And now they've got another Fishman. I mean, he pops the Laguna on Roggi, but he does go down anyway. Roggi will survive. He said, at least in terms of kills, they're having a very good time. Farm-wise, had... it's still a very good time. My only concern for them being Watson's still having an extremely good time. And speaking of Watson, currently he's chasing down Force. Force will go for the trample play, try his best to survive through this and fight back, but there's no way to do so once Kataomi gets involved. Onslaught is there, but it's just too short. He doesn't channel the, th the full duration. And with that, he will just go down. Dyer's middle tower. He gives himself a head bonk as well. Another stack of Agi for Watson, and that is his Ags pretty much almost done. He's got the gold to buy it on. I'm surprised he didn't buy the orb yet. They are trying bot. Radiance curry. Got a shot. Black hole was there, but doesn't do too much against Cox. Toby now just trapped in the tree line, has absolutely zero places to go. We'll just go down. In fact, now Narman, he can really Ooh. hunt them down because they all just show up. Get the magnetized going. He needs the backup. There is going to be the Ember Root hitting back in, but Skem showing up. Has he shown up the wrong time, though? It does seem like he has. Still Narman. He found Fishman, but that's all they're going to be able to find as he is set to fall. They'll just pounce him up and take him out. Big kills here for the side of Entity. Now nah, they reveal that Ags in a very big way from Watson. Again, once you've got the double pounce up, the Molina is just so easy to get on top of. The Ags still not quite there for Skem as well. It's a little ways off in that build up. Maybe just waiting for one primary Ags here on the side of Geek Slate before they really start to clump up. Force just lacking the recipe. We need to see some action out from this Primal Beast. Like, yes, he's been holding the lane. He had a grid time top for Force. But outside of that, he's not taking part in any of these fights. Whereas right now, even Fishman's, uh, even Watson's more than ready to join in, build up, get those uh, essence shift stacks up for himself. Cox, Jump and in. he's got the blink red. Right on target. He's got Roggi. Radiance Skem tower trying to wait attack. for the Dark Pack to help out. Lasso is going to be there, though. Cox immediately jumping in, but Kataomi with a big avalanche is going to save the day. Still, they are going to jump in, and they've got Watson. Watson is down, but here comes Stormstormer to try and salvage the situation the best he possibly can. Out of remnants, though, he cannot continue chasing down Skem. We forced to back off. So, a one for one trade, but certainly in the favor of Geek Slate. They have found the the slot for the sake of the Radiant silencer. Then three are unable to pursue Radiant's anyone else. Is under attack. And again, Geeks like they're taking all of these fights with their lean up front and their primal beast nowhere to be seen. They're still making it work without that body forward here. 
Yeah, Force is just not joining the fight. Toby, Roggi will be tossed back into Toby and they will secure the silence to kill once again. Geek Slate just trying to protect that mid tier one tower. Still trying to buy the time for this BKB to come out on Force. And now he does have it, it's on the Courier. They will lose the mid tier one, but that BKB they've been waiting for for such a long time is finally on its way. We'll see what they get done with this. Yeah, it needs to it needs to make something happen. They've been buying time for force more than scam. So the investment in BKB must lead to some aggression out here as entity they're smoked off. Black hole still down for 30 seconds, but they keep control of that top triangle. Uh, this radiant triangle though. Avalanche toss, Cox, he's a big target. You're four staff away though, we'll survive for now as Narvin. He gets the silence off, but doesn't opt to try and roll in. Not feeling confident with how low Skem got there for a moment, rather how low Cox got for a moment. Still a very close game though, 16 to 12, 1k advantage the way of Entity. Anyone's game at the moment. One team fight can give you such a massive swing in terms of net worth. Radiance and there's going to be a big smoke up from Geek Slate. They're going to try and make that big team fight happen. Maybe even just a big team uh, pick off to happen. Storm Stormer, he is probably going to be the closest target to them. Yeah. Does have at least one remnant to back off here. So he can get himself out to safety, but and Blink Lasso is ready for Cox. Yeah. Storm Stormer, smoke broken, remnant away. Oh, Storm no. Stormer, though, he's out of remnants. Global Silence is there just in the nick of time as well. Still, Entity are going to try and move in and get something for their troubles. Katahomi looking for a toss back, found a creep. So Narman still running, gets kicked away by Fishman. But it won't matter. He does go down. Yeah. And they, they find some punishment, but it's an Earth Spirit for an Ember Spirit. You're a lot happier on the side of Geek Slate. You are building up these Essence Shift stacks. And Watson, though, does have five permanent Agi. And the Slark is really your big issue now on Geek Slate. Yes, you're finding punishment on pretty much every other core, but Watson's been free farming like a beast. Farm parity with Skem. Five free Agi on his way. BKB coming up next. Once that BKB is up, he's really got nothing to fear with the pounces in. Got to be a bit cautious here on Geek Slate as to allowing that to happen. But I mean, just confident enough to have the lasso answer for Cox. Another group up from Geek Slate, but Entity. In the meantime, they are just freely farming up on Watson. Still about 200 gold ahead of Skem's Lena, so the pause one matchup is still proving to be extremely close between these two. Both sides might just kind of take a back seat now and relax for a little bit. That farm going is now it's a 2k advantage to way of Entity. Keep in mind, Geek Slate are around the road shop here where Entity are on the opposite side of the map. A little bit scary for them. In fact, the Geek Slate have that access to the Roshan Pit and they aren't really nearby. The, while the outposts are still there, on the Dire Jungle, they should be just fine. Oh, even the T1 Metal is still standing. Die, but I suppose you do have to be careful not to allow Geek Slate to just kind of sneak that one away from you if you're, if you're, if you're not too cautious. Yeah. Don't want a free rush to go the way of the Lina. Two lives and Scam is just going to change the way these fights break out. And speaking of Scam, BKB is up for him, but Entity smoked up. They've got their spells ready. They know they've got to go for the Roshan play. Jump in. They're going to try a big avalanche from Katahomi. They found Roji as well, so both the Sansa and the Earth Spirit will caught, but they're both fine for now. Watson. Watson gets pulverized, but he has the Dark Pact. He's okay to pounce out. There's going to be a five-man smoke now. Geek Slate. Still want to try and pursue the side of Entity. Storm Stormer picks up a double damage rune for himself while he's within his own smoke. Let's break it now. They know he's around the, there somewhere, but instead they're going to make the jump in mid lane. Onto Katahomi. But they even found Fishman on the Rubik, so a two-for-one special. Fishman still being controlled up. We'll get bursted down by a scam. And there's Storm Stormer getting caught. Global Silence is out through the BKB. He can't get out of there. Still waiting for it. He gets over just in the nick of time. But the Lino attack still going. Storm Stormer trying to run, but Narvin's on the chase. But no, it's not enough. Oh, he will barely survive. Oh, it was like the Matrix watching him try to avoid those Lino attacks, John. 
Oh yeah. Flying all over the place. Very awkward position to pop the BKB and Global Times comes afterwards, but they just didn't have enough damage coming through. The DD, the damage he was dishing out with Slide of Fist, more than enough for Storm Storm to get some gap spacing from the other heroes on Geek Slate. And that's the window he needs to just slip out. So they force out some pretty big usages there. Global signs down for a good time. You've got Black Hole ready. You can take Roche yourself down, Entity. You know the counter fight threat from Geek Slate isn't there. It is a bit of a process, but will go their way eventually. Certainly will. Geek Slate, they can try to fight this one out, but they've got to get there rather quick. Armin is on the way on the Earth Spirit, and he can always try for a Roshan still. Not that easy, though. Especially into five heroes. We'll get a bit of vision. Fox will move in with the Firefly. Kataomi out with the Avalanche. Roshan now getting very, very low. And Force is going to make the jump in. The roll-in is there from Narman. Watson will jump out of the Roshan. He'll go right after the kills instead. Onto the Sansa. Roji is down. Skem's in trouble. He'll try to BKB and run. Meanwhile, Kataomi about to form the Tiny. But Force will do the exact same. Seems like Entity have won the team fight. And they can just casually move right back into the Roshan pit. The Cox is still trying to make it difficult on the Batrider, but there's no way into the pit. Narman's already left the building as well. He's not interested in trying to steal the Aegis. Just too hard without vision. And so a massive win for the side of Entity. BKBs are just making it so hard for Force to try to get that control he wants on some of these bigger heroes. Like the moment the Sark just pops BKB, he gets a double pounce off, your backline just gets ripped apart. And he enjoys going into the Primal Beast at this point. He enjoys going into these tanky heroes, getting more stacks of Essence Shift up. Radiance he can tower. dish it right back. Side of Geek Slate, Scam, forced to keep away from Bot, knowing that there's going to be some action to force into that tier 2. Cox just sneaking around a bit. Not really able to get Radiance any ambush here, but would want to cut attack. the creep wave at least. Radiant structures are fortified. In the meantime, Watson just casually pushing in the tier 2 bottom tower along with the rest of Entity. Geek Slate, they'll hang around Radiant's that dire jungle. Entity still going attack. after the bottom tier 2 in the meantime. They could run into Kataomi, though it's not the biggest kill, and he's got the vision anyway. Radiance bottom tower is fallen. of illusion. On tier 2 tower does go down. Watson's still sticking around that bot lane, knowing he's probably safe. And rotations are incoming. They want to fight that top lane. They see Skim on that Lena. On the creep wave, he's kind of been left behind. His team is slowly making their way in. But Skim is forced to pop the BKB to be able to get out of this. Roggy, he cannot do the same though. He'll get pounced by Watson. No BKB of his own. He will drop. Skim, rather Stormstormer. Chasing down Force in the meantime. Does land the chains out onto the Primal Beast. But he doesn't have the backup. So I say that Watson, he is approaching very quickly on that Slark. Force still trying to run, but the pounce is right on target by Watson. So there is hope around, but Cox now, he'll be targeted by Watson. Watson just does not care. He'll move into anywhere, anytime. As pounce away again, this time will not land. So Cox will get out, so will Force. But as you can see, John, they are having a lot of trouble trying to deal with this Slark. They can't commit onto him. They know with the two lives up, they only have one real good hard lockdown spell opportunity to use there. They will smoke up now. We've got the global sign, so got to wait to still counteract Toby if the threat of black hole comes in. Just need to find a pickoff. Like, if you can find a pickoff while the Aegis was running, you're pretty happy. That's going to stall out the progression onto a push, stall out the progression onto your other tier twos, saves your high ground some time, gives Skim some time as well to finish up this full silver edge. Not going to be able to fully commit that. They don't really have the forward vision here from the side of Geek Slate to hunt down Entity at the moment. Entity, they've got a 5k lead up now. This Slark is just so damn big. And this is him without the shard. Once you've got the Death Shroud on top of all of this, like just all of that immunity makes it so difficult for the side of Geek Slate to really do anything about it. Here we go. All man smoke up. Entity. You can find. 
Narman closest target right now to Watson. He can make the pounce in, and he does land it once again. And a nice kick away with the boulder smash, but it's not going to do enough. Scam hanging around in the pos one Lena, but understands he cannot help out his support. We'll just have to watch him go down. But maybe they can try for a counter fight. Fox will move in, but a nice slide of through from Stormstormer at the right time. So BKB was there, so the Firefly and Lasso do basically no damage to Stormstormer. They are fine to back off once again. Look, look, just look at Watson. And this Slark, he just keeps moving in on his own. He's going to pounce in again. You can almost feel it. He's finding yeah, another target he's... for himself. He's... He's just too durable. Radiant's middle tower is under attack. He's just way too big. Like this, this Slark, it's just so hard to burst down. You don't really have the damage to deal with him. You, fe you fed him 10 permanent Agi. Going for the Scotty next. He's almost there too. Like, you need to be able to jump the Slark first, but the single target control is just handled so nicely by the Dark Pack. You can't commit with Lasso, you can't commit with Pulverize. There's always going to be an answer. It needs to be Norman in first with a silent stun. And it's just so hard to catch a Slark anywhere. Even even if you manage to get Norman in an angle, it just has all the pounces in the world. You have the full axe up and running on force. So he's got a little bit of the break flying around on the up four. Good, good uptime on that as well. So you can dish a lot more damage in the middle of these team fights if he does live true. But speaking of slippery, I mean, Storm Stormer has his full axe up. He's just going to be jumping around as well in the middle of these fights. Eekslate, they're lacking control. And it's really starting to make this game a lot more difficult than it should be for them. Still grouped up as a team here. Eekslate is five. Entry doing the exact same though, not willing to give any openings over. Scam has done still significantly... Well, considering his net worth on the leaner, still top of the net worth board. Just can't deal with the Slark once he makes the pounce in, though. Scotty very close for Watson, and now another double damage going to be done by Stormstorm at a boot. The damage is going to be hidden like an absolute truck in this next fight. But both sides, they'll take it easy for a little bit. Maybe wait for the next Roshan, though it is a fair bit of time away. Entity, I mean, they'll probably be the team that try to make a play, if anything. And Speaking of said play, they are grouping up now. Gardi is up on Watson. They're going for that surprise item reveal. Importantly, they've got the Blink on Toby, so you can set up with the Black Hole. If you just catch the Silencer in that, you don't have anything to worry about. Well, here we go. They saw Skim in the bot lane, but he's going to back off for that right moment. Force will break the smoke of Storm Stormer, but he just pops the BKB and rushes right in. On the Cox. BKB is popped, but they've got the Bat Rider in trouble. He's still trying to run. Meanwhile, on the backside, Katsuhomi, he found two targets, forcing more BKBs out. Skim is forced to just TP away from his team, as this is not the fight he wants. Narman? Narman's going to be all right. He will, he will TP as well. It's only going to be one down for the side of Geek Slate. Like one down that whole team fight. Just so many BKBs being forced down to be able to get out of there. It's costly. Geek Slate down under charges now on Skem, down to six seconds. Much more opportunities for Watson to jump on top. Once he has a full basher up, you're not going to be able to bail out with the TPs as well. And you still lack that big control piece for the Slark. As long as he's able to dance around, jump all over the place with a BKB up and running, you just don't have a solution from Geek Slate. And it just goes back to maybe not playing around your timing. There was a moment when the entire team of Geek Slate just felt a lot stronger, but Force was just not joining these fights. He gets the BKB up and running, and then suddenly it doesn't matter. Like he just can't hold the key here. He can't hold the Slark. He could maybe hold the Storm Stormer, but with a BKB, he has to wait for that to fade unless Narman can set up. It's just demanding a lot from both Norman and Cox in this game. And it's a lot more forgiving for Entity. I don't think we've ever seen Toby even really commit a black hole outside of that one-time bot, which didn't line up. But he hasn't had to in these successful fights. And once he has that BKB, you don't have the solution for Maji anymore. If you force Global Silence first, just BKBs jumps in, and Toby's there to clean up.
it's geeks like has to execute on a very fine line here absolutely <laughs> a lot of tension in this game one like it's a 6k advantage but it still feels close enough for a comeback here for geek slate not too big of a deal one team fight will do it roshan is up now so both teams need to make their way over to that roshan pit that they will hang around that area just a question of which team starts at first but it probably has to be entity i think geek slate will be more than happy to just be patient on their in their own triangle well, Skim just picking up a Satanic now on that leaner as well. It's a big itemization for this next team fight. But that is a Satanic into the Skadi of Watson, so maybe not quite as effective. And it's not like his BKB is that long of a duration anymore. It's six seconds. Yeah, it's, it's a lot tougher. Skadi can be, in a way, a solution to... Satanic, but the active does still overwhelm the Scotty healing reduction, so Scam can still stay alive decently as long as it doesn't get chain stunned. You can get that Satanic off. Roche is up. Roche number two with a shard. Just doesn't feel like a simple fight for Geek Slate to take. Tread of Black Hole looms over them if they go into the Roche. They haven't been able to find a pickoff recently. They're playing a farm game, and only the Lena is really winning, winning that for Geek Slate. Everyone else is starting to lag behind. Cox and Force just not able to keep up with Storm Storm and Toby at this point. So you've got a pretty decent edge for Entity to play off of. And for Geek Slate. I mean, this patience can pay off. The Lina still has room to grow, but it just feels easier and easier for a Slark to go into that late game. Because you're talking about two invulnerability spells in Shadow Dance and in Depth Shroud. You have nothing to match that on the side of Geek Slate. That's the one thing with Slark. It's almost like Juggernaut in that ultra late game scenario where omni slash isn't busted because of the damage it's busted because it's like a five second invulnerability window where your core is just doing damage slark has that as well lines being drawn out all over the place here it's late smoke on smoke situation this could be massive for either side but roshan has gotten started now for entity entity Still just going for it as Geek Slater wrapping around through the dire jungle. There is vision on that high ground though, so it could be very effective for Entity as they do jump in now. Lasso is out, they've caught the Enigma. They'll try to burst him down, but he does have the Lotus Orb to protect, but no, it's not enough. Skem will take him down, but the immediate buyback is there. Roji has also died, so it should be a free black hole if he can get within range. As Narman and Fishman both go down as well. They've caught Force with the pounce out now, so Watson will keep trying, but there's your BKB out from Force and the Onslaught away. But they go right back towards that Roshan. Geek Slate, can they get there to fight it? It doesn't seem like it. They use too many of your resources. They know the threat of Black Holes there. They've got to surrender at Roche with Free Shard. And that should be Watson picking up everything. So Depth Shroud's gonna be in play. The secondary life is in play. Geek Slate, they're showing us some great ways of taking these fights, but again, the cores that they want to kill, they're just not in a position where they can take them down. Cox getting caught a second time with the pounce out from Watson, and he's just gone. I mean, Stormstorm will take the kill, but that was basically just all Watson. Ah, my back hurts. Yeah. Again, it's just, it's Slark at ultra late game. Well, not even ultra late game, just Slark towards this late game period. With all the pounces, with all this invulnerability, with its level 20 talent pack, once, once he hits that level 25 talent, your window to be aggressive just shrinks as well. Because of how long that essence shift will last. Radiance middle tower is under Entity, attack. they can slowly just take control of the map. The side of Geek Slate, they're trying to shove on the sides. Scam, just looking to ensure at least bot will force a response out at some point. But they're going to lose their top in the process for this overwhelming army from Toby. And for Geek Slate, it just doesn't feel like they've been confident in a while. Like they've just not been able to jump, they've not been able to get control. They've got this Lina that can do a lot of damage, but Slark just gets on top of you and you're in a world of hurt. And there's no simple solutions coming out. Maybe this BKB on Armin is actually the big one, as he does have it finished up. So you can roll in 
fully commit for the team and try to force the angles out, try to force some BKB usages early, have the team reset, and jump back in afterwards. That could be the play for Geek Slate. Could be. Cool, 9k advantage now for Entity. This game's still top of the net worth board, but it just doesn't translate if he's not able to just stand there and hit people the whole time. Now TP is coming back towards the side of Geek Slate. Entity will move back into their dire tri rather dire jungle. Toby's leaving the arcane room here for Watson, I think. Mm. Watson oh, will take it. So this is a very scary slark with very low cooldowns now, and they're going to see Skem. That's the primary target. Immediate remnant in. Pounces out. Forced the BKB from Skem, but he still can't just run away from Watson. Watson will just keep chasing him down. The leader caught out. Four staff away, but another pounce on the leader. Skem is down. No buyback available, as next will be Cox. There goes your Batrider. Narman, he may not be safe either. He'll try to BKB up, but the roll is going to be blocked, and they will just keep chasing them down. Watson's an absolute monster on this slug. There's just no stopping him. He's just... He just has such a good game lineup for him. They just never pressure that Slark while he was weak. They allowed him to farm up. They played this farming game with Force and Scam. And now their high ground is just going to get torn apart. He still has Aegis for two minutes. There's no reason to back off. Black Hole is still ready and Toby as well. Radiance middle tower has fallen. That it is. Radiance bottom Entity. tower is under attack. the career, of course. <laughs> Before he comes back into the mid racks, he just does the old double pounce maneuver. Gonna be the mid racks gone. Radiance Watson looks like he's about to build up an abyssal blade. Just make life even harder for the side of Geek Slate. Now to Omi, he'll make a casual jump in, but can't find the avalanche toss. Radiance can just Ogre still towed him out of there, though. No real problem for him. There might be two Raxes to go the way of Entity. Well, they might be able to stick around for the third as well. There's no T2 tower standing to protect that third Rax. So if Entity are feeling a bit spicy, they can just move in for a third, get the Megas up and try to get a GG call gone. Yeah, no, I'm safe, it safe. Yeah, Arlena respawns there, the full force of Geek Slates online. They know they've got some fair items off cooldown. BKB should be ready to go again. So they respect that. They know the big opportunity for Geek Slate is an overextension on the high ground. Just don't give them that chance. Although, Watson. Watson. You see, he has got the Aegis up. He's still got his BKB available, but they'll just four star from away. Watson actually just hanging around on the high ground, just casually waiting for someone to show up. Realizes there is a ward on that high ground, though, so. Can't go for that surprise maneuver. <laughs> Anthony, they, they are going to play a bit more conservatively. Like, I, I suppose they realize the comeback is still available for Geek Slate if they do lose a big team fight. So without seeing the opening that they want, they'll just back off for now. Geek Slater backs against the wall anyway. They haven't got many places to farm at the moment, so the net worth lead should only escalate for Entity. And there's really not much they can do about it. They're kind of just stuck waiting high ground for a good team fight. So they could choose to smoke up, but every smoke they've gone for recently just hasn't even been close. Nah, and they, they have so many ways of just breaking it nicely on Entity, and every single time Geek Slate pokes out, the best core they've been finding has been Toby. That's the best hero they've been finding so far. They've just had nothing to answer onto the Ember for a Stormstormer to Watson Slark. They are trying to build up Hexes now. Force is trying to go for the site. So again, piece of control on hand. If he can get it up and running, just get the right target to jump on. Easier said than done. An entity can just play this game. Very patient. 21k lead. Win probability right now is 99% the side of Entity. The com comeback potential for Geek Slate is so small. But again, you've ha you have all these relocation spells. You've got the lasso. You could try to just hope for him for a fountain play, which is why Entity is just so respectful. Like, we've seen that happen at least once before. They don't want to have to go into it. And, and just play it safe. No rush. Shiva's almost done in Storm Stormer. Blood Torn for Watson. And you're just set to go. You have all the defensive spells. You've got your toolkit ready. You know that Geek Slate can't keep up with you in farm. So why force the issue? 
Just play your game. Yeah. They're just sitting high ground right now, just waiting. Entity grouped up in the mid lane. They have got a smoke ready on Fishman if they do want to pop it. And they will. Stormstormer has his own invis rune, just currently maybe setting up for a bait in the mid lane, hoping someone makes the jump in on the Ember. But there'll be a long wrap around here from Entity. Down towards the bottom lane they go. Aren't going to really be able to go for a pick off without entering the base, I don't think. But there is a counter smoke now from Geek Slate. Heading towards Stormstormer. Geek Slate, they'll run through the top lane. Question is, where are they headed? They haven't got the best vision right now. May get spotted in just a moment. Stormstormer, he'll break the smoke on Narva, but there's going to be a lasso out. They have caught a big target. It's going to be the Ember, but Stormstormer, he'll be fine for now. Inzid, they'll try to make the jump in on Watson, but Watson, he can just heal up with the Shadow Dance. They can't really kill him. Meanwhile, Cox, he's trying to run, but he's getting destroyed by Watson as they found Scam. They've got the leader. There is no escape. Oh. The Batrider runs the black hole. It does come out. It's so tough for Geek Slate. Roggy, Roggy will drop. GG is called, they've seen enough. Geek Slate. Yeah, they just got off to a running start for Watson. His lane was a little bit back and forth, but he did find himself a couple of kills there. And for the side of Geek Slate, there was this moment in the mid game where everything was Leave a charm! <laughs>